What's up, everybody? How are you doing today? Let me just uh, turn down the music in my headphones a little bit. It's uh, it's a little bit overpowering. How are you all doing today? I think uh, I decided to go for a more relaxed day today. I'm sitting down, so uh, so yeah, all good here. Got my water, and uh, a few of you will be happy to know that we've started. So uh, you only had to wait like what? eight, nine minutes. Everybody's so impatient. I blame YouTube for everybody being impatient because the, uh, you know, the, the speed of YouTube videos is, uh, has gone down and down. That's it, Evan. This is not the Cyber Mentor, but if you uh, manage to hack your way in, you get to be the Cyber Mentor. So that's the, uh, that's the challenge. If you can get into the YouTube channel, then, uh, then you get the stream. And when are you when are you joining me on stream, Evan? Come on, I've been waiting. This is episode fifteen or maybe sixteen. I forgot. I just kind of guessed the uh, the episode number. So, uh, so how's everybody doing? Can't see any uh, any questions in the chat. Do, 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 do. Oh, what's this? At AppSec Explained, have you ever messed with a uh, head of AppSec Engineer? Uh, yes, I have actually. Um, I took one of the uh, labs, which was like integrating or like automating uh, Zap into like a CI/CD pipeline. Um, and it was really good. Yeah, I think it's quite good. Um, I'm not sure. I think their pricing model changed. So maybe it's a little bit more expensive now, but I don't think it's too crazy. But I actually think if you want to work in like application security as an AppSec engineer and you need like uh, a wider range of skills than just pen testing, I think it's a really good resource. So uh, I, I would recommend. I'm surprised it's not more popular than it is because it's been around for a little while now. Um, and it covers a lot of cloud security stuff, which is really, really important as well. So um, so yeah, shout out to um, to AppSec engineer. Good, um, nice one to... Uh, to put that one out there because I don't like I said I don't think that many people uh, know about it all right people you saw it here first Evan is coming on stream next week and uh, no idea what we're doing but I think he promised that he'd be in a hot tub when he came on stream so um, so there's that to look forward to as well but uh, <laughs> we'll find some cool stuff to do I think yeah yeah it'd be good we can do some um, Maybe we can do some like attack and defense and some hardening stuff. That would be cool. All right, today's video. Yeah, so I, I haven't put, uh, made like a schedule graphic. So we'll we'll chill for a little bit. I'm going to show you guys the new PEH labs, um, give you a little sneak peek if you want to see them, um, which released 
an hour ago. So um, so that's pretty fun. And then I've got a box lined up as well. So we're going to go through that, which I think is quite a long box. So we might not finish it today, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, just so sorry. I just ended PEH. Bad timing. <laughs> you can you can go back and do and do the web stuff. It's it's all good. So uh, yeah, it's all good. All right, let me scroll down. Um, if you watch the TCM videos at two point five times speed, I usually watch things at one point five because like you know I can still absorb information, but two point five is too fast for me. So. Uh, so bad times. And what else? Oh, this is a good question. So I started learning SQL injection, but when I try to hunt, I get so confused where to start and what to do. Can you give a little bit of advice? So the start of any, like I, I assume, it sounds like you're doing bug bouncy if you're like just from using the word hunt, but it could be any pen test, right? So the main thing is, is mapping the application. What does the application do? What pages does it have? What input points? What parameters? And then look at those parameters, try and figure out what they do, and then try and put in payloads into those um, parameters. So, you know, you can basically try and inject into anything you want, anywhere where you have controlled inputs and it, it does something. That's um, That's basically... The way to go but i think as you do more and more labs or more and more pen testing you kind of get a sense for where it might work so um yeah i mean login forms anywhere where you're submitting data to be saved or updated for sql injection but on the flip side sql injection is quite a well-known vulnerability now so it's um it doesn't come up that often so that's also kind of like the flip side of, of finding sql eyes that um most things are hard, so I'm just going to put my phone on silent because it's uh, dinging away. Um, do I have a malware bytes license key? I don't think so. No, unfortunately not. You'll have to uh, you have to Google for that one. Um, do, 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 do. Is try hack me premium mandatory to learn pen I don't think so. There's there's plenty of good re free resources out there. I think it's useful, um, but if it's you know if it's too expensive for you, don't don't fret. There are many many free ways to learn pen testing. You don't actually have to spend money. Spending money makes life a little bit easier, like quality of life and things like that. But it's like you know you don't need it. You can be successful without it for sure. Oh. All right, so let's keep going down. I'm I'm behind on the on the chat. What's going on? You, so many things coming in. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, this is a good question, but the answer is it depends. Um, I did learn. I mean, I've learned a lot from like my previous employers and, and working, but also I've learned a lot from just doing research and study on my own. So it's like both is is kind of the answer. Um, but getting paid to do it definitely helps because then you know you're quite consistent and things like that. So, um, hey, what's up, Yusuf? It's been a little while. How are you doing? Yeah, we're gonna have a look at the pH labs today, I think, and then we'll do uh, do a try hack me box. It should be should be fun. Hope you're doing well. TCM hot tub stream. Have you not seen the previous TCM hot tub streams? There's a couple, I think. Oh, well, there's at least one, if I recall. There might be two. I can't remember. Uh... All right. So just so you know, I'm I'm four minutes behind on the chat. So if I if I haven't got to your question yet and you posted it, you know, uh, I'm I'm coming down. I'm I'm scrolling. I'm still coming down. Uh... Oh, this is an interesting one. Um, so tips for a person that when hacking, I have some bad patience. I know you want to hack fast. Maybe you miss stuff. You love Privesk, but sometimes it feels overwhelmed on what to check. Yeah, I mean, hacking definitely takes some patience. I mean, not all the time, but yeah, I think... Um, 
when you see it like in films and stuff or when you see streamers right for example i kind of like because i do this every day i kind of like know like, the commands and stuff off the top of my head but in reality when i'm doing a pen test i do a lot of copy and pasting from my notes and i'm a lot slower and, and, and things like this and i might be like reading the documentation but um uh i don't know i think what advice can we give to somebody who's not patient apart from being more patient you can obviously automate things um you can do some of your own scripting you can speed things up um you can like there's a lot of automated recon tools that will do a lot of stuff for you make sure you have lists prepared and ready to go so that you can quickly fuzz stuff as like a sanity check and honestly keep a checklist of stuff you're doing because if you're working quickly you might miss stuff but if you keep a checklist when you come back over it you'll be like ah oh, okay um we forgot about this and this so so that's my advice i think all right there's a SQL injection video on the uh, PH course now, so you can um, you can check that out if you want, by all means. I think with DVWA, there's loads of SQL injection videos on YouTube, right? Like, if I search, oops, I think I just typed my password into some random box somewhere. Let me come to YouTube. DVWA, right? Uh, SQL I. Yeah, look, there's loads. There's, there's tons. So you can these out. I will probably do some more SQL injection videos at some point, but it won't be on DVWA because it's it's a little outdated. And there's plenty of content on there already. So we'll do some some other fun stuff. Maybe some like blind SQL I and stuff. No SQL. No SQL injection is definitely uh, definitely fun. How much experience do I have in the field? I think I'm in my ninth year of my career, maybe eight. So I was a developer for a year and then I was working in information security. And then I did a few years as an application security engineer. And uh, so I was a security analyst for a bit. And then I worked as a AppSec engineer for a big uh, multinational tech company. And then I oversaw like some um, I was in charge of DevSecOps, um, cybersecurity training, and security architecture for that organization as well. So I managed some global security teams, and then I've been at TCM for a while as well. So I have a fair bit of AppSec and pen test experience, especially from like a range of things. So finance, tech, um, small companies, large companies, even in the public sector. I worked a little bit for uh, for the police force in the UK. That was fun. So I'm not 20 years in yet. I still have, you know, a lot to learn, but I'm definitely uh, through the door, if that makes sense. Oh, uh, this is a good question. Um, I think for new, for web app sets, you're right. There's actually like, it's still a bit up in the air. Maybe check out the Hack the Box uh, CBBH. I think that's a quite good one. Or the Burp Suite, uh, Port Swigger's um, Burp Suite Professional, if, I, if that's what it's called. I think those are the two that are that are quite good. And OSWE is like, yeah, it's just code review, basically. So. Mm. Oof, Dark Venom, you're in the timeout. Rip. Um... Ah, uh, yeah, okay, HTTP request smug smuggling. I'll do this, I will cover this at some point on the stream, for sure. Yeah, I yeah, will do. What's my favorite app from OWASP? Um, yeah, probably crappy, because it's API driven, and it's actually really, it's quite a good application. And it's really interesting, so... Um, yeah, I think Crappy is probably my favorite, for sure. We'll do a few more questions and then we'll move on to some practical stuff. Um... Oh, 
right, let me show you guys some updates. I'm gonna, I'm still scrolling down and I'm still behind, but um, we actually just uh, launched a new update to PH. So let me pull you over to my VM. And... Somebody say I'm looking scruffy. What? What? I had a shower like two hours ago. All right, so these are the new labs for the PEH course, and there are 18 labs. And basically, um, if I move my face out of the way, how do I do that? No cam. You can see that we have like three injection labs, XSS labs, command injection labs, file uploads, auth, XXE IDOR, and capstone. And basically the way I've done it is um, the first two labs are like exercises. So you get like a first lab and it's a basic injection. And then you get the second one, which is like a more advanced lab. And you can like tick them off as you go. And then the third one in each is like a challenge. So you get like a small web application and you need to pull off like some uh, SQL injection attack. And same with like XSS, for example, there's like a support portal challenge. And then like for command injection, there's like a uh, car tracker. So you need to find command injection in here. And then we've got a nice little uh, capstone challenge at the end. And if you can guess what theme the capstone challenge is, of course, it's going to be like, oh, whoops, I didn't click the button. It's going to be like a little coffee app where you can come in and you can like, oh, I'm logged in. You can log in, sign up, whatever. Um, you can add ratings to coffee, for example. And the capstone challenge, you need to do like a full pen test. It's not just, oh, you, you can get like uh, remote code execution. You actually need to look for all of the vulnerabilities within the capstone. So a little bit different to like most CTFs where you have like, oh, you need to find the flag. I'm not going to tell you where the flag is. I'm just going to tell you to like do a pen test if that makes sense. So, so these are the new labs for um, uh, for the PH. And I think next update, I'll maybe I'll put a dark mode in. So uh, you know, if this is a little bit too bright, then uh, then you can do that. And uh, yeah, all good. All right, let me keep scrolling down. Oh, this is a good question. What are the best platforms to learn CTF and where to participate in live events? So for, I would start with TryHackMe, uh, for sure. That's a good place to start. And then if you go to ctftime.org, you can find upcoming CTFs here as well. So this is what um, my CTF team uses for like tracking and, and stuff like this. And you can see, I mean, there's tons of stuff like the Hack the Box business CTF is coming up. There's a amateur CTF, BDSEC, all sorts of different stuff. So, um, so yeah, check out CTF time. And of course, there are loads of teams, just Reddit, Discord, Google, and you'll be able to find some uh, some people to hack with. All right, so we keep going down. Do, 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 do. Oh, can I recommend some free ones? Uh, off the top of my head, no, but I will try and put a list on my site at some point. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can dig some out because I don't really usually pay attention that much because I have the Hack the Box and Try Hack Me sub, so I just I just chill and, uh, and just do them. All right, so if you want to start a career in cybersecurity, it's very simple. You just come to the Cyber Mentor cha channel, which I was going to say challenge, and what year are we in? It's 2023. If you want to do web app pen testing, there's a guide here. And if you want to do network pen testing or ethical hacking, then watch Heath's video here. And other than that, you can do 2023 hacking, 15 hours, the cyber mentor, and you can work through, oh God, there's so many ads, these videos as well. So that's the free way to do it. The other way is just come to the TCM Security Academy, sign yourself up for the PEH and uh, and enjoy and enjoy the new web content as well. So, um, so there you go. That's how you start hacking in 2023. 
Um, do, 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 do. Good question, though. Yes, this is true. Shout out to Portsburg. Good uh, recommendation from Michael. Uh, Portsburg has good SQL injection section. Hey, what is this? Are you talking to me, Zach? I am way older than 20. I think we're like the same age, aren't we? We're a similar age. Let me keep scrolling down. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip past the most controversial question I've seen so far. Maybe I'll answer it later, but we'll see. We'll see. I hate uh, I hate answering that question. <laughs> and the person who posted it probably knows who they are. So it's a fair question, but you know, it's all good. Ah, uh, the facial hair. Yeah, I need to have a bit of a shave. My um, I usually have like a trimmer, uh, but I lost the charger for it. So. Um, so yeah, how long did it take to make the labs? Good question. Um, I might be able to tell you actually, because I track all of my time uh, through an application. And let's see. Ah, uh, no, I only have labs and video, but quite a lot of time. It's a good few weeks of work for sure. Uh, to be honest, most of my time went into testing, like <laughs> because everybody, like most people, are running the labs locally, and to get stable labs working across lots of different versions of Kali, across VMware and, and virtual box hosting, across different uh, RAM and CPU usage, across different, like relatively recent versions. If your version's older than 2023, then Shogunai can't be helped. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time testing. Um, but yeah, making the actual labs, I don't know, it was a couple of weeks for sure. And uh, I built it in a nice modular way. So I'm going to be adding to them, I think, in future as well. So um, yeah, we can definitely, uh, definitely do that. All right, a few more minutes of questions and then we'll jump into, uh, into the box. Do, 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 do. Am I using Live Boot or VM? Uh, yeah, I do everything in VMs. So um, I have like, I don't know, so many VMs open. Like, I can probably actually, does it show you? Is it gonna? Yeah, I have like, look at all the, I mean, just, just hundreds of them. I like all of my AD stuff and, and everything. So VMs are the best. Especially since like live streaming and stuff, I obviously have to keep some separation between like pen tests that I'm doing and live streaming because I don't want to accidentally like leak client data and things like this. So, um, what are some vulnerable prerequisites? What do you mean vulnerable prerequisites? I don't understand this question. Oh, this is a, okay. So yeah, I mean, I'm probably not the right person to ask for making a resume, but um, if Zach or Joe Hudson are on stream, definitely those guys will, will be able to like give you really solid advice, I think, on this. Um, but just from, from my perspective, having like hired people in the past and being a manager, um, mostly I look for it nicely laid out. I like bullet points. Um, I like to see things like, okay, you know, here's your education inserts, here's your experience highlights, here are the things you're proficient in, and then like your work history. And I like to just be able to look down it and be like, okay, yeah, cool. Um, so that's you know my my kind of view. But don't don't leave out things like your GitHub projects and stuff like that. I really like it when you know I can go to somebody's GitHub or or profile or projects and and check it out. That's that's quite nice from from my perspective. So, um, so can I do live bug bounty? I thought about this, but unfortunately not, because if we find a bug, we'd be irresponsibly disclosing it. So, 
you know, there's like at least 100 or maybe 150 people watching right now. And if we find like a SQL injection, anybody can then just go in and, and trash that that target. So, yeah, um, I'd love to do live bug bounty, but unfortunately, it's against the um, like the terms of service and, and stuff like that. So we're stuck with CTFs, but you know, I will try and recreate some bugs that I've found in the past as labs, and we'll we'll go through them as well. So. This is a good question. Okay, so what is a solid step by step for application security? For someone who's done four years of on prem security, mostly implementing new technical controls. Um, if you want to be in application security, a little bit of development experience goes a really long way. Um, even if you're not like a super you know, programmer, not building stuff, you've got to be able to communicate with developers. Um, you've got to be able to communicate with, you know, uh, technical people, DevOps engineers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, I would say that's that's really important. Get just get a little bit of programming under your belt. Um, understanding the technology stack, understanding the development lifecycle, CI/CD pipelines, a little bit of automation, that also helps as well. So, that and then you know look at common vulnerabilities and common defenses as well. That's a kind of like a good way to get started. We have a video on this, I think, on the YouTube channel as well. So. So all good. Is, is Zach really old? What? He doesn't look old. I thought you were older than Zach, Adriana. <laughs> is that rude? No, I'm joking. I didn't think that. Don't don't hate me. Uh... <laughs> okay, I have to highlight this just for, you know, because this is my favorite message so far. Brits age slower because we have healthcare. Um, I'm not sure that's the reason. I mean, healthcare helps for sure, but lots of lots of countries have healthcare, like not just not just the UK. Lots of European countries, I should say. Uh... Yeah, actually, I wanted to do some write-ups about this. Um, I need to check the policy in terms of like. How much I can disclose and how much I can't, but I'll, I'll definitely do um, do a video on this. And I'm putting together kind of like my general methodology. I don't do a lot of bug bounty, you know, maybe like once a week I'll spend a few hours. But um, I do have like um, a methodology that I follow, which um, which I can also put into the video. So yeah, this is definitely on my to do list. All right, let's say three more questions, and then we'll do we'll jump into the box. Uh, Okay, question number one. How important do you feel WebAssembly is for web pen testing? Um, I don't know, it's useful, right? It's kind of like nice to know, but I wouldn't say it's super important. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't put it in the foundational stuff. I'd put it like later on. So, you know, that's, yeah, that's a tricky question actually. Yeah, I, I wanna say it depends, right? It always depends. Depends what you're working on. Depends what kind of things you're trying to find. Um, do I have an underground lab? Uh, yes, I'm underground right now. I'm not really. No, unfortunately not. My lab is in the cloud. So there you go. It's uh, over overground lab. It's like the um, you know where Lando Calrissian lives in in between the clouds. Um, all right, last question. How to start CTFs? Uh, use walkthroughs. So basically, go through all the easy ones. Try it. Try like you know, scan all the open ports. Look at the services are there, and then if you can't make any progress, have a look at the walkthrough. And it's like, ah, oh, hey, you know, FTP is open. You can brute force it. Okay, close down the walkthrough. Brute force FTP. Spend another twenty minutes working on the application. As soon as you kind of like go twenty minutes, half an hour, you don't make any progress. Open up the walkthrough again. Have a look. Put it in your notes. Honestly, like using walkthroughs is it's going to save you so much time. I mean, there is a time and a place for spending a day or spending a few days on on a challenge. But as you're learning and as you're starting out, you know, fire comes later. Just to begin with, make you know, make use of your time, learn as much as possible, absorb as much as possible, if that makes sense. So, so all good. All right. Um, I haven't seen anybody tell me to turn on my VPN yet, so I'm going to turn on my VPN. 
before before this uh, before this happens. Um, let's clear this and let's come here and then let me cd vpn sudo open vpn try hack me yeah that worked and then let's make a directory and let's call this thm tech and clear this and then let me spin up the machine and while it's spinning up actually i can answer a couple of questions because it takes 60 seconds to um spin up uh, for the PH labs, you can you have to sign up for the PH, so the academy, academy .com. It's all in here, so it's part of the course here. So if you come to all courses, do, 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 do. here we are. It's part of this practical ethical hacking course, so it's all in there. And let me pop off the chat overlay. And yeah, if you want to start doing um, malware analysis and reverse engineering, just find a course and follow the course. That's like, you know, going to be your best bet, uh, I think. There is a course on the TCM Academy, I think. Was there one? Ah, uh, it's forensics. Yes. Oh, here we are. Yeah, yeah, this one. Um, and Matt Keeley is really, really good. So practical malware analysis, analysis and triage. You can take a look at this. So this is a good, a good place to go. All right. So do we have an IP address yet? Yes, we do. Let's ping this box. Make sure it's working. Hey, that's good response time as well. So let's clear. Let's do mmap, and we're just gonna do top ports. Let's do like 30 and let's just do this uh, and let's just do all of the, uh, what's it called? All of the scripts, standard scripts. Is it possible to jump from QA slash test source meeting to pen testing? Yeah, I think so, for sure, 100%. I actually think QA engineers would probably make really good pen testers because, you know, you've got to find interesting quirks and applications. You've got a good background. Um, you know about the technology. Um, yeah, obviously, you've got to learn a little bit about like common attacks and exploitation and steps for pen testing. And, and you know, there, there are things to learn. But I think it's a, it's a great like um, entry into pen testing, uh, in my opinion. And a lot of security is automated these days. You know, if you can automate stuff, make things faster, then then you're all good. All right, so we have 22 and 80 open, which is quite nice. And then I think in the background, while that's running, I'm just going to do a initial scan like this. And then we'll come into here. Clear this and let's take a look and see what we find. Default page, typical. We always find this. Um, so what I'm going to do is so I'm just going to move some stuff around on my screen. Let's put this here. And I'm just, oh, that went weird. Hold on. I'm just doing this so I can see the chat still, because when I've got my VM open, it covers the chat. And now I can see everybody. So we're all good. All right, so the first thing I kind of think about when I get to like a default page like this is uh, what does Wappalizer say? It's just going to say Apache. It says Ubuntu. This is the like default installation page. It says default page for Apache. So, so this makes sense. So I think all I'm going to do here is do some directory busting. So I'm just going to go fffuf dash u http colon slash slash. Oh, I've already got it on my clipboard like this. And then let's choose a word list. So user share word lists uh, common like this. And then what this is going to do is it's going to go to http 10, 10, 26, 125. 
and it'll take the first word out of this word list and try it. So like it'll try slash admin, then it might try slash robots, and then it might try slash, I don't know, cheese, tiramisu, um, gelato, all sorts of things. And we can start to try and like discover content um, on the website. So TCM has a Discord. You just go to discord.gg forward slash TCM, I think. Like, is it slash TCM? Or is it like slash the cyber mentor? Yeah, there you go. I even know the invite. So um, yeah, you can just join Discord. It's all good. It's free. All right, so I'm going to scroll down. Oh, I like this idea. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I can find some stuff if I had time. We should definitely start a, uh, a bug bouncy program. And we'll just give away those cool caps. Um, so now this is run. It's found HT access, HT pass to BD. Um, although these are all like 403s, so not very exciting. Um, but it did find index, which is like the page that we were on. And then we've got service status, but again, this is 403. But slash test and slash WordPress, even though they're redirects, so both look quite interesting. And PHP info.php sometimes gives you some useful info, and, but not all the time. It's like just information disclosure is generally useful. Sometimes we can see whether we're allowed to upload files, we can see the version of PHP, et cetera, et cetera. So this is sometimes a useful thing to see. Also means that we know what payloads we might be using when we're exploiting the web service. We're probably going to end up using. Um... Ooh, this looks like fun. Yeah, this just looks like an image. This is like a. Spam site, so maybe uh, maybe this is a rabbit hole. Let's go to the next one. I like how it says Windows Firewall Protection, but this is a Linux machine, so uh, you know there we go. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, nice try. I think this should be like you know uh, a Linux version. We get best tech tech support, so this is um, this is useful. <laughs> QA is basically web app pen testing. Ah, uh, I don't know. Like, I think there's some crossover for sure. But the mindset should be similar, maybe. I think it depends on the tester. I think some QA engineers that I've met would make amazing pen testers. So, and some of them, they're, they're just like, you know, just chill. So, and that's all good. Um, I have a friend who is taking um, OSCP, and he was, um, he, I'm pretty sure he just played League of Legends through his whole his whole exam. And then, uh, and then a few hours afterwards, he just passed and all good. And his proctor was like, why are you playing League of Legends? Shouldn't you be doing your exam? So um, props to him for, uh, for chilling <laughs> and just playing games. Um, all right, so we've got this WordPress. Um, and let's take a look and see what we can find on here. We find this, it's not a very useful phone number. I kind of want to see if there are any posts with any usernames. We've got support here. So this is a potential username for us. And then we just got this default installation of, of WordPress and this WordPress commenter. So we could use WP scan, I think. Let's come back. Looks like there are a couple of open ports as well. So SMB is open. It's been a while since I've seen SMB open. So what should we do? Let's let's run um, WP scan. I can't remember how to do it. Um, history, graph, WP scan. Don't steal my API key, guys. Make your own. Here it is. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. I have like tons of API keys, so they're free to make, so you're all good. Let's grab this. And 
and get rid of the double HTTP and see what happens with this. Uh, do I want to update? Uh, it might take a while, so let's click no. And then while this is doing this, um, let's uh, SMB clients uh, dash, is it dash capital L to list or is it lowercase l? I always forget. 10, 10, 26, 1, 2, 5. And looks like this is an interesting share. So SMB clients, uh, how do we connect to it? Do we just do slash slash like this? And then, or do we need to add something? It's been a while. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so we're good. Oops, we just do ls. And there's an enter.txt. I reckon this is gonna be like a to-do list or something or, or something, I don't know. It's very CTFE, but it's okay. If it helps us along, then uh, then we should be all good. Yes, this is a good a good shout. So if we can um, write to files, then sometimes we can like inject into templates and things like this. This is definitely uh, something worth checking for sure. Ah, um, oh, this is a. Good question. How do you manage the time to add to new knowledge on the sideline of a busy schedule? Um, I try and study for an hour a day. Um, is generally like my target, so I have an hour of time. Although recently I've been working on the wiki, so I'm going to shamelessly promote it now. <laughs> um, I, I can't even spell it, so AppSec explained. So I've been like working on this for a little while to like try and get like a decent wiki of like um, exploits and how to approach pen testing, but mostly like so that you know people can come in and be like, hey, I'm stuck or I need some new ideas, and you know uh, this should help as well. But yeah, basically. I just try and set aside a little bit of time every day. And if you're really busy in the day, what I used to do was when I was studying for exams, um, I would do my study at the very start of every day. So it was always done because if you do it at the end of the day, lots of things can happen through your day. Stuff can get in the way. You got like family commitments. Did my mic just die? No, it's fine. I hit it, but it's, it's a lie. Um, yeah, somebody invites you out for beers, um, go to the gym, maybe whatever, it doesn't really matter. You stay late at work. Um, so early morning study is definitely, uh, definitely the way to go. Yes, free WP scan token. <laughs> you saw it here first. I'm gonna have to get a new token now. Oh. All right. Uh... Yes, we should start like a hacking techno club where we just live stream with techno music and we all just do bug bounty or something. This would be uh, this would be fun. All right, let's see what this um, enter.txt has for us. So I know my face is kind of in the way, but we have some make fake pop up and hosted online on DigitalOcean server. Uh, so we saw this, we saw the slash test fix subrian sites. We haven't seen subrian. Subrian doesn't work. Edit panel. So in a CTF, this is basically saying, hey, go to slash subrian. So let's uh, just take a look at that quickly. <clears throat> so I'm just choking on my, um, on my water. It looks like it's hanging. So we'll give that a second. Edit WordPress site. And then we get admin. And we've got some credentials here. And this says cooked with magical formula. So this is probably like, let me move the, the camera out of the way. So here, cooked makes me think of Cyberchef and magical formula, I think is um, one of the filters you can use. I've seen this before. So let me come to Cyberchef. If you if you haven't used cyberchef.io, highly recommend you know bookmark it and and use it. And basically, you can take some inputs and you can be like, hey, I want to make it like 
base 64 and then I want to do it again and then I want to do base 45 and it gives you the output. But you can do the same like the other way. So obviously if you have some encoded text, you can then go through and like decode it, for example. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and then this could be MD5 actually. What's the length? The length is 33. MD5 is 32, if I recall. So it's not MD5. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think there is a... Yeah, there is magic. This is a hint. Yeah, it looks like this decodes. So let me move... Uh, how do I get to the top? There we go. I'm out of the way. Um, from base 58, and then from base 32, and then from base 50... as uh, base 64. Um, and then, it yeah, it does a load of matching. So... The decoded text is scam 2021. Super useful for CTFs and, and also just if you need to like decode and encode like cookies and things like that, this can also be quite useful as well. So let's go into our try hack me deck and then vim creds insert admin like this. And let's come back to this. So it looks like we got forwarded but then we've got unable to connect and it's forwarded us to a weird IP address. So let's run Web Suite. Doesn't really matter which version. Unless we do some brute forcing. And I forgot we need to check WP scan. Oops. Start Web Suite. Oh god, there's so many findings. So, what version is it? Yeah, 5.7.2. And then, looks like there are a load of issues. But like, when we're doing CTF, we don't care about things like um, cross-site scripting. Maybe we care about SQL injection. XSS we don't care about. Super admin objects. Injection in multi-sites. Sounds fun. Prototype pollution, yay. But nothing that really jumps out that I really want to dig deeper into just yet. So we might come back to this. Oh, Textilla is the theme. Let's keep going with this Subrian for a bit. And if this leads into a rabbit hole, we'll come back and um, and uh, and check. So uh, it's forwarded us here, but it's changed the IP address. So what I want to do is, where's my IP address? I've lost my, lost my machine. There it is. So I want to go to this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I've seen this once or twice before as well. It's um, if you can get to WP config, it's pretty bad. Usually, there's credentials in there for like the DB and stuff. We're on um, we're on try hack me. So um, we do sometimes do hack the box, but generally speaking, there's more web stuff on on try hack me. So um, so I keep that. Keep that going. Oh, this is a good question. Is there a reason I see people using um, burp over stuff? I think burp's a better tool just generally. Oh, look, we got forwarded again. Um, in my opinion, I think I, it's apps okay. I mean, it's useful, it's open source, which is great, but I just, I prefer burp suite. I, I don't really ever use that. And, um, when I'm doing actual pen tests, uh, I use the Burp Suite scanner as well. So the main reason I pay for Burp Suite is for Burp Suite scanner, not just like you know the Intruder, for example, because I can I can use open source tools like uh, Furf and WFurs and all sorts of others if I if I want to get um, non throttled uh, brute forcing or fuzzing. Um, this is annoying. It's like. Sub Ryan, but it's forwarded us proxy HTTP history. Three 
302 found. Yeah, it's sending us this weird IP address. Why is it doing that? Maybe we need to add the host name. Or let's try and fuzz this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and uh, let's clear this because I don't really care about WordPress anymore. FFTF dash U fuzz user share web lists dev common same word list as before you can see it you can see it here let's see if this gives us any um interesting results oh i did the wrong ip address no all right let's do the actual the correct ip address i did the one at 40 let's do 10 10 26 1, 2, 5. Good thing it's like an invalid because it was like dot zero, but obviously if it was like some random IP address of some other server that was out of scope, we're kind of coming, could have been dangerously close, oh God, uh, to going out of scope there. So always something to think about is, you know, double check um, your IP addresses and, and things that you're doing. Uh, let's filter the 301s and was it 302s as well? Oh, there's some 403s. Yeah, I can see some 302s. Let's get rid of those. Whoops, I put a dot instead of a comma, as usual. <laughs> How do I choose my target for bug hunting? Um, generally, two main things. One, oh, three main things. OK. The application has to be fairly big and complex. It can't just be like a blog site, because there's not really much to find there. Second, I prefer API-driven applications over normal web applications, just because I like testing APIs. Um, and thirdly, it has to have been updated somewhat recently. So I'm not going to start hunting for bugs on a website that, you know, the last time they had a program update was like two years ago or, or 18 months ago or whatever. So those are kind of like my three, three criteria. I tend to avoid shops and things like that. I don't want to have to buy stuff and refund it and, and do that kind of testing. Um, I want to make life easy for myself. So. Yeah, that kind of like narrows it down usually to a few. And um, and then I do have like a couple which I pegged. I was going to do like a uh, long-term bug bounty on it and like monitor the site. But honestly, I didn't really get around to set up, uh, to setting up like uptime robot and things like this. So I haven't really bothered doing like the long-term bug bounty. I've just been playing around in my spare time. So... Oh, I think a lot of people do look for cross-site scripting, and you should definitely look for it. Um, yeah, it's an important finding. But for CTFs, it's useless because we're we're not attacking users. So, yeah, but in a in like a legit engagement, I'd definitely be hunting for cross-site scripting. So, yeah. Oh, I try this. Was this WordPress slash sub Ryan? Let's try this. I like this collaborative hacking. Yeah, no, no dice, but good, good idea though. Looks like we did find some stuff though. So we got slash robots, sitemap, and updates. So let's check for. Um, what did we get? Sitemap. And I'm just gonna copy and paste. Robots.txt, which is useful. Uh, what was it? Slash updates? Oh, forbidden. Maybe we can do this recursively. And then here we've got a bunch. So backup and then cron. So we've got backup and then cron and then front install panel. I'm just checking them all manually quickly. Friends, install. Oh, that looks promising. Panel. And what was the other one? Temp and updates. Obviously, if you're taking if this was a real real engagement, um, you'd be taking notes and like mapping all of these and then refuzzing and things like this. But I think in CTFs you can 
the path is usually fairly clear. Okay, so we've got this pre-installation check, MySQL version 5, PHP 7.2, XML supports, file uploads on, which is good. We've got all of these directories that are writable, which is useful. So if we get like um, file upload vulnerability, we know that we can write to these files, which if we can write to uploads, that's perfect. But if we couldn't, then we might have to search for another folder to write to, like, like temp. So that's good. We have a login. This one didn't work and we got forbidden here. So let's try the creds that we found earlier. Scan 2021. Doesn't sound promising. Let's see if this works. Yeah, Burp Suite has a lot of really good plugins actually. Uh, so it's definitely, uh, definitely nice. All right, VT, take it easy. Enjoy uh, the rest of your day. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, for subdomains. Uh, yeah, I use um, um, uh, subfinder and was it CRT dot, dot IO? No, CRT dot something. No, this isn't it. There's a website that's like CRT something, and uh, I use that for subdomains as well. And um, yeah, and uh, I also fuzz for them using FFUF. So when you're doing fuff, you can just do like dash H, and you can just do like host fuzz dot target dot com like this, and you can just um, fuzz for subdomains as well. So it's quite useful. A few different ways to kind of achieve the same thing. Um, looks like we're in as admin, which is nice. I'm going to assume that we don't need to test all of this manually. Maybe we can just find an exploit for this. There's the version 4.2.1. So let's just search exploits. Or is it sub Ryan? Sub Ryan. Let's see if we get an exact version match. Looks like there's some stuff. Some stuff happening, which is good. Um, uh, is a premium subscription worth it? I think so. I don't. I think it's uh, great value for money. So yeah, I think it's all good. Um, there's a lot of content on there, and also the the paths are quite good. So you know, and if you're like me, because I tend to jump around a lot, having like um, uh, a path to follow is really helpful. So I recommend. Oh, the, the controversial question keeps coming up. Okay, ICP or PMPT for pen testing. Um, so, I mean, there's no denying that the OSCP is a, is a very valuable certification. Um, but I think if you want to, like the reason I started looking at TCM courses, and I, I, I okay, so I hold the OSCP, but I don't have PMPT. PT. But the reason, like years ago, I did the PEH course because um, because I knew nothing about Active Directory and my Active Directory skills sucked. And so I think the PEH uh, and the PMPT prepares you for going on a pen test. Whereas I think OSCP teaches goes a lot deeper into like troubleshooting and um, figuring out how to like um, get exploits to work and things like this. It's not that the PH doesn't cover that, but I would say the OSCP is a little bit more on like the become really good at troubleshooting and the PH is much more like become good at pen testing, if that makes sense. So I hope that kind of like answers the question, but you know, if you're worried about it, just get both and then, and then you're good to go, right? That's the... Uh, this name, uh, this box, sorry, is called tech support. Oh, signup.xml, did I miss that? Good shouts uh, for, is that Alan? Is it Alan or Elaine? Sorry if I said your name wrong. Um, is it signup.xml?
Looks like it's hanging, but good, uh, good shout. I'll probably typo something for sure. Um, we'd probably do more with this page if we didn't already have access to the panel. We might come through and try and set up like a different admin user or something like this. But I think for now, we're probably happy with the admin panel. So let's see if we can find an exploit. So again, we don't care about XSS. We don't care about XSS. Arbitrary file upload is always interesting. We've got an exact version match as well. Cross-site request forgery, we don't care about that. And we don't care about cross-site scripting. So our only option is this. So let's search splits, mirror, grab this. And I like to read or just have a quick skim of exploits before I run them. Ah, oh, do I have micro? Yes. So micro is like a little in terminal ID, which is quite nice. Um, so just looking for instructions. So it looks like it needs the URL, the username and the password, which we, we have. So this is authenticated um, attack. And then the upload URL is upload slash read.json. And then we've got slash uploads. So that's where it's going to put the shell. So if it doesn't execute, it might already be on there. Um, and then we come down. And then, so I'm just, just minimizing my notifications. And then what have we got? We've got Beautiful soup to grab the token. Grab uh, grabs the CSRF token to log in. Fine. This is the login request. Generating random name for web shell. Generates web shell. Do, 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 do. Sets the cookies. Do, 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 do. And then. Yeah, that looks like fun. Okay, let's try and run this. Um so it looks like Python 3, so let's just run that, and it's going to tell us we need a URL. So let's do dash u, oops, and we want this slash panel, don't we? Ooh, this looks like maybe we can get IDOR on a low-privileged user. Um, <laughs> we can check that out another time. Uh, dash user was admin and dash p was scam 2021, right? Let's see if this works. Ooh. Didn't like that. Maybe we don't pass this in like this. Oh, login failed, check credentials. I gave you. Uh, what? Um, how do we pass in the user instead of... Um... Uh, oh, dash L for the user. Okay. Do. Yeah, because I'm pass passing in dash U twice. That's a bit dumb of me. Let's see if this works. Oh, crt.sh. Yeah, thanks for um, uh, for linking them. Sublister is quite good. Yeah, it's all good. Oh, nice. Glad to see that you're on the uh, you're working on the pH labs. Let me know if you enjoy them. I'm just scrolling down the chat quickly, just checking in with uh, for questions. Do, 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 do. I'll double flag you, yeah, for sure. Uh, oh. All right, yeah, it looks like I'm caught up with the chat now, so all good. Um, did we get a shell? Let's see, who am I? Hey, looks like we actually got a shell, which is good. 
and the music stops. So let me um, let me just pop the, the playlist back to the top. Um, how did I exit my uh, control key? Is the um, is, have you have you downloaded it and you're like stuck in the in the UI? Um, yeah, you can use like control S to save and control Q to quit. So it's quite a nice little um, you know. And for those that want to try it, you just sudo apt install. I think you can just sudo apt install micro like this, and then uh, you can micro like a file, save it. And then Control Q to quit. So it has um, it has like uh, color support for like JavaScript files and stuff. I think if I recall, I don't use it that often, but it's sometimes handy to have a little um, uh, IDE in your in your terminal. So um, all right, what was I doing now? I've totally forgotten. Here we are. So I reckon. Yeah, this is like a limited shell. So what we want to do is upload a proper shell. Uh, so let's cd into here. Let's copy user shell web shell. Whoops. Loudnum PHP. Oh yeah, PHP. No, I don't want ASP. PHP, and then PHP reverse shell. And then let's use micro to do this. Micro PHP reverse shell. And then you can also like, yeah, I think you can just like highlight and delete, which is kind of like a semi GUI terminal editor. And then I need my IP address. Grab this. Paste this in here. 8888 is fine. Save, close, move it to rev.php, and then, whoops, 8888. And then on here, maybe we can just wget rev.php, but we actually need to um, post it first. So let's do control D, cd into here. Uh, Python 3 dash n hv.server 80. So this is hosting the file, and we're going to grab this rev.php, execute it, and then catch it with our listener here. And so let's grab it, and then chmod plus x rev.php, and then dot slash rev.php. Ooh, did that work? Oh, no, it didn't work. All right, so f I suspect because we're in like a limited shell, when I did plus x, it's probably interpreting or not interpreting the special character correctly. So let's try this again. Dot slash rev dot php. No, I still didn't get it. Interesting. That's uh, that's annoying. Hmm. How else can we upgrade this to a shell? Oh no, uh, yeah, because I'm executing a PHP file with bash. So let's do php rev.php. There we go. All right, if you spotted that, then fair, fair play. I was being dumb. I'm trying to like, you know, like, yeah, I've just been stupid, so. Um, Use Bebo in C2. I haven't built my C2 yet, but I will. Um, I will do some. Uh, do it at some point uh, for sure. Um, all right. Uh, what do we want to do? Which Python? So Python dash C import pty pty dot spawn bin bash like this. So we have a, a semi-proper shell. I'm too lazy to do all of the other xterm stuff, and I always mess it up, so I don't even bother anymore. And let's have a look around on the uh, 
Oh, we've got scam sites. This is a user. You can tell because like the ID is a thousand because they like a thousand, thousand one, thousand and two by default. You can probably change it. I'm not sure. I have to ask a Linux sysadmin how to do it. But let's check, take a look in home. This makes me think that maybe we need to go back to that like random site that had all of the, the junk on it at some point. Yes, let's definitely do let's definitely do a stream sometime and do this. Um uh, this is this is live as well, so this is evidence that you said this. <laughs> so we should definitely uh definitely do that. That'd be fun. I think a lot of people are looking forward to seeing you on stream, because obviously like, you know, they see you a lot around like posting around TCM stuff, so so that would be good fun. And uh I'll learn some stuff too, which is cool. Uh C D web server. And then, yeah, this is where we saw the share. So the share is mapped to this. And then let's sudo dash L. Uh, we don't have a password for dub, dub, dub data. Speaking of passwords, though, uh, we have WordPress. And I can't remember, somebody said something earlier about WordPress configs. So if we cd var dub, dub, dub HTML, there's probably a WordPress file. Come into here cat config, whoops, cat wp. Sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. She's um, very needy. <laughs> just like at the door, just howling. I can hear her through my headphones. That's how loud she is. Um, do, 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 do. So we have DB user supports. And we have this, I'm a scammer, lol123. So let's try this password. We can also check the DB for um, credentials, sensitive information. But let's see. So scam site. Yeah, and we're scam site. So like, yeah, password reuse, super common. Every time you get credentials, try it against like login forms, try it against like web dev, try it against SSH. We could try an SSH into the box maybe, but if the shell dies, I might try that, but um, we're, we're okay for now. And I think what I'm gonna do is just vim creds, come in here and we have scam sites. And we're just gonna put this in here like this as well. So now we're a new user. Um, what do we wanna do now? Let's do sudo dash L again. <laughs> Passwordless sudo icon V. I don't think I've seen this before. Icon V. What is this binary? Um, let's go to GTF opens. Every time I come to GTF Obins, a colleague of mine submitted the 7-zip one. So every time I see it, I think of him. My uh, colleague Yamate from, from Tokyo. Uh, so props to him. He's a good pen tester. Um, what was I looking for? A common V. And then sudo file to read and we can read. Okay, so the binary is just very super low. It does not drop elevated privileges and may be used to access the file system or maintain privileged access. Okay, so if we just do grab this, and for example, sudo user bin, oops. I'm just gonna grab it like, icon v and then the file to read like this and then let's try etc shadow oh and we need the password for scam site oops cat creds what what doesn't like this. Did I mess something up? 
Or did I not? Let me check back into the chat. Did I put a period in there? I thought I took it out. What? My, my, my terminal is lying to me. Probably I didn't backspace. All right, we'll just, we'll just chalk that up to me being dumb. Um, nice. So we could try and crack this, but that's, you know, that's not fun. Let's think about what sensitive files can we read on a target? Usually we go for things like SSH keys, the shadow file. You can crack stuff from here. Um, what else? Config files that we might not be able to read, stuff in root. Let's see if we can grab roots. Um, oh God, I've messed up. I'm gonna type it in. Let's put it into mousepad first. Uh, it seems to, do you want to restore available data? Nope. All right, let's grab this and then slash roots dot SSH ID RSA. Let's see if this exists. We we'll just paste this in. Ha! Yes. Can't believe that worked first time. All right. So let's grab this and let's come back to the terminal. Oops. Where is my terminal? I was already in it. Uh, Vim. Uh, let's do roots ID RSA. Paste this in here. Chmod 600, if I recall. SSH roots at, let's grab the IP address, dash I. Host key verification failed, yes. Ah, oh, no, we need a password. No. Do we have to crack this first? Um, so we do SSH to John, like this. And then, no, we're just going to call this ID RSA. Has no password. So why doesn't that work? Maybe I've got the wrong order. Do I need it here? Dash I. No, we still need roots password. OK, so like passwordless um, SSH is not enabled, unfortunately. So. Um, what else can we do here? How do we become roots from this? We can technically solve the CTF because we can just do like uh, roots.txt, I think. Yeah, we get we get this. Which I want to be root though. <laughs> maybe that maybe maybe they've set it up so it's. Uh, Oh, was the yeah it solved it solved the lab but hmm how can we privesk off of this real privesk not just reading flags privesk Oh yeah, get root bash history. That's a good idea. Uh, so it's dot bash history. Whoops, history. What is that? Haha, -ha, nice. Is there a clear text password in the bash history is the question. Infosec Gamer. Ah, authentication failure, but maybe this is the passkey for this. No, it's not. Ah, I was really excited there. Uh, okay, so we've got echo to show us onto root.txt. Oh, this is the flag, okay. I wasn't really reading. I just saw this and thought it was a password. Um, 
Restarting SSH. MySQL. We could check out MySQL. The repository here. Yeah, no luck, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the permissions. If you don't set the permissions right on um, on on this, it'll it'll give you like a, if you like. Oops. Like this, it'll just tell you. It'll be like, hey, unprotected private key file. So should be okay. Six hundred, I think, if I recall, is is correct. We write with all right. Let's try this as a POC. So we don't need that, we just want. Let's try this. Is it going to shout to me if I haven't seen it in the second one? Oh, sorry. Cats uh, temp test, not etc test. Oh, uh, okay. So, what we want to do then is maybe we can append to. Um, uh, etc past wd or something like this. So if we cat etc past wd, grab this, and then it's the easiest way to do this. Um, I can't remember the commands to gain uh, to add a user here. But uh, let me think about this for a second. If I remember, it's on hacking articles where I read it last time. So let's do um, I think there's a great article on like, yeah, as Linux X, uh, Linux privilege escalation using SUID binaries. And uh, there's a few different ways. So usually I just add the SUID bit to bin bash. But we, what we actually want is, yeah, this one. Ah, oh, why can't I copy and paste? No, this is horrible. Okay, so open SSL, pass WD. Is it dash one or dash L? So let's do this. I'm just going to do it on the target. So open SSL, pass WD, dash. Is it dash L or is it dash one? I can't remember. And then dash salt can just be pass, and then the password can be pass. So we want this, and then we want to come into here. Oh god, this is a, like this, and then we can just create like no, we don't want him. We want the reuser. So let's grab this, 
grab the root user here and then we put this in here so it has a password and we just call this root2. And then I think maybe this is gonna work. Maybe. Can I just like this? Maybe. Is it gonna like this? This might actually destroy the whole machine if it doesn't do the line breaks properly because we're um, we're totally messing up the etc pasta bd file. So incoming reset if this uh, if this goes all horribly wrong. Did it work? I don't see roots two in there. Oh no, I did it to temp test. Actually, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> All right, so I did it to temp test. So that looks like it worked. So now, I, I definitely did that on purpose. I I, I used uh, temp test to make sure that I didn't destroy the um, etc pasta vd file. So let's etc pasta vd like this. Copy this. You can tell I'm a web guy, because as soon as we get to this, and then sue roots2, uh, pass. No, authentication failure, what? No way. What was our password? Maybe I've broken the file. Because if I broke the file, then they definitely go. That does not look like what it needs to be. And I think it's probably the special characters have broken. So let's put it in single quotes, maybe. And try again. So this is quite a fun privacy. Yes, nice one, job done. All right, props to uh, Joe for the shout out on writing to file instead of just being able to read files. Definitely, uh, definitely helps. This is why Joe's on the pen test team, for sure. Nice, that was an awesome little privask. So now um, we own the whole box, which is, which is good. And we can CD into roots. Oops. And actually, if I bring up the, um, if we actually look at the box, so here, you actually only need to read the root flag. The um, you don't need to get privesk. So we went a little bit further and actually did it, which is nice. And uh, yeah, it's a nice machine ticked off. So. Uh, so all good. Um, please make a hacking roadmap. There is there is a few of these. Um, they're on YouTube, so you can just come to like YouTube, check out. Uh, I'm going to turn my proxy off because there's going to be tons of stuff. Just go to the, the Cyber Mentor YouTube channel. Have a look for Ethical Hacking 2023, and there'll be there's a roadmap video. And there's also like um, 15 hours of, of tutorials along with everything else. So, um, so all good. Oops. All right. And I think that is, uh, that is the box that I had uh, today. So um, if you have any other questions, I'll be around for a little bit longer, but otherwise I'll be diving off and uh, having something to eat. And then uh, what am I going to do with the rest of my day? I don't know. Maybe have the evening off because it's already quite late. It's like nearly 7 p.m. So all good. Oops. Close this down. Every time I save my Obsidian file, uh, Defender comes up and he's like, it's like, hey, you know, 
should you send this file to review for Microsoft? Should we block this file? It's like, no, please don't block or delete all my notes. That would be, um, that would be horrible. So, um, so all good. Um, do I solve the try uh, hack box and try hack me hard in insane boxes? Yeah, I've done a couple of insane boxes on hack the box as kind of like projects. Um, like if I have a long weekend free and I really want to torture myself. Um, on Try Hack Me, there aren't many insane boxes. There's only like five, if I recall. I can't remember. Um, and I've done I've done one or two. I did um, one to do with Anubis or like the pyramids or something. It was very CTFE. Um, but I don't do them that often, to be honest. Hard boxes, I've done plenty of Hack the Box hard boxes. Um, depends on the box, really. I tend to just do the ones that have high ratings, like community ratings. Ones that have low community ratings, I just, I don't waste my time, so. So all good. Um, any advice for bug bounty beginners? Um, yeah, just make sure you pick applications that have a, a large enough, um, like, attack surface. You know, so I think like I was saying before, don't pick like a blog, because it's like, there's nothing really to attack. Um, and uh, honestly, for me, authentication, authorization, those are the two main things that I, I like to test for. Um, and then beyond that, business logic issues. A lot of people just scan for like XSS and Swagger UI. I mean, finding CVEs is great, but finding actual like, you know, issues within the application, you're given a unique application every time is I think uh, quite rewarding as well. So, um, so yeah, it should be uh, all good. Yeah, uh, search for ethical hacking in 15 hours on the Cyber Mentor YouTube channel, and so uh, you should be able to find it. And also, about 15 videos back, um, Heath did a ethical hacking, like the road into ethical hacking uh, 2023 as well. So, so there's a couple of good, a um, uh, couple of good, good videos on there. All right. And I think, yeah, we'll finish up there. Thanks everybody for tuning in. And uh, thanks to the TCM team. Always good to see you guys hanging out in the chat as well. So um, yeah, I'll see you all next week. Uh, have a great rest of the week. Enjoy your weekends and catch you all next time. Thanks everyone.